Hi, my name is Artis. I'm the Spoon Man. Artis is actually my only name. Boy, I get a lot of grief for that. We're sitting in my little two-room flat, Jack and I, which is on the water front, water side of a building on Water Street in Port Townsend. We're going to do a little interview that complements this article printed and published in 2002, Real Change, Seattle's Advocate, dis dis Disenfranchised Advocate Newspaper. It's a weekly. This interview took place at the Pike Place Market in Seattle. Um, in 19, I mean in 2002, and 2001 or two. I mean, this may be some of the reason that uh, that, that that this interview was taken um, or done is because uh, in 2001, three of us, myself, Jim Page, and Jim Hind, who is uh, deceased, Jim is Jim Hind, uh, last year, the three of us organized um, and founded the uh, Pike Market Performers Guild. Not to do all of this, but the tr truth is, back in '85, I did a, 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 a I performed in London at the Covent Garden um, Buskers Festival. In fact, I just found a pass for it the other day, and um, ever since then, I've wanted to have one in Seattle, a Buskers Festival, and um, so I advocated for that within the context. I was the first. Uh, I was elected the first chair, I think the second chair, and so forth. I was an uh, officer throughout the, my association. I left it recently because, uh, or I took a sabbatical because I'm living here, not in Seattle now. But I advocated for a street fair, and it was, I, it was that same year we developed the, we found, we organized the guild in August, and in uh, September, I think it was, we had our first street fair. And um, could have been 02, could have been 02 this year. Uh, but, and we've had it ever since. It's the only Buskers Festival between here and San Francisco, I think. And, um, and it's organized and produced by Buskers. So that might have had something to do with this interview. My appearance, <laughs> as you might notice just barely, there's a little uh, teardrop tonsure on back in the eye. The thing is about my hair. Nobody but myself has cut my hair since 1968. That's 40 years. And um, so I let it grow, of course. It was long when I was younger. Before I went in the Navy, it was long. And so I let it grow, and I grew... I grew it, didn't cut it, but the, yeah, I cut it once in a while, but I cut it myself over uh, 25 years. The end of 91, I um, saw a video, somebody took a video, home video, of uh, of Jim and I and, and Ed, it, it, Eugene, and, um, and he sent it to us, and it was a relatively inexpensive type of uh, uh, and so when we move, this tonsure, uh, I mean, my ha my shaved head looked like it had a, a little uh, teardrop tonsure here. And I, uh, you know, whenever I'd move my head, so it kind of it, 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 it trailed. And uh, uh, as they used to say, well, they're high on the acid. And uh, so I liked it. It looked good. So I went for it and uh, let it grow a little bit and then shaved all of that off except the uh, tonsure. And... Um, I liked it. That was 92, and I wore it that way till I think at least five years, on and off. I'd let it grow a little bit once in a while, and then I'd shave it again. So I think about 97, I stopped, and I went back into shaving it. And I had a shaved head until, on and off, I don't know, till recent, till I let it grow recently, but I've been on meds for um, eight years or so, and the meds I've been using lately... Uh, uh, it won't let my hair grow more than a couple of inches. Then it just starts falling out. And I have a whole head of hair, and I'm not about any reservations about bald. I just can't control my hair like I used to um, with these meds. So, I shave it. It's just 
a drag they have hair all over the place. So, so that's really why I do the, the hair thing. Not to say I'm not vain, because I certainly am. Hell, I spend 20 minutes trying to get out of that, maybe more, trying to get out the door, just to make sure I look the way I want to look when I get down on the street. And even more if I'm going on stage. You know, I want to get back to Jim Page. Jim Page. Jim Page. In 1971, I picked Jim Page up hitchhiking because I'd seen him do a bar break. That means you go up to the act, you go into a club, you go up to the act that's already playing, and, and when they go off the stage, take a break, and then you ask them, hey, man, can I play the 15 minutes you got here? And then uh, Jim would do that, and then he passed the hat afterwards. This was 1971. This is like nearly 40, 38 years ago. So then I saw him hitchhiking, <coughs> pardon me, and I picked him up hitchhiking, and uh, and we became friends, not fast immediately, but we, you know, we got, and I wasn't playing yet, not, I mean, I had been playing Spoon since I was 10, and I was, what, about 23-ish, maybe, at the time, 22 or 3, and um, I, uh, but I wasn't, I was playing occasionally, but not for people or anything. But I always I only ever wanted to, excuse me I only ever wanted to be a uh, a uh, an entertainer and I never thought I'd play with spoons but you know here we are but Jim did this stuff and he was also doing I mean he would make up songs as he you know he he basically talk his stuff melodically while he's you know playing without being doing what it would be otherwise a made song and his songs were his own and they were pertinent to issues. Uh, happening in the world, the city, the country. Um, so he's very inspiring. And uh, the very first time I was ever on stage was at a club called the Medicine Show Tavern in, in, in Seattle. It never had a marquee, didn't have an address on the door, and it was always packed. Uh, and the first, you know, so I, it, well, Jim was doing a break there, and I walked up to him, and I says, hey, man, can I join you? And he knew I played spoons, but I wasn't playing spoons like like I said, performing. And he didn't bat an eye. He said, sure. And I played with him. And he, when he did the ad-lib type of thing, he'd call me Toothless Jake. And at the time, man, I had a full set of ivories. I mean, I had good teeth. And now, <laughs> I'm Toothless Jake. That was the first time I was ever on stage. I owe him a lot, really. He's the most influential um, person in my life politically. And... Um, Musically, I'd say. Musically, in, in all-inclusive all songwriting performance.